it's a long time coming and long overdue. We're, we're starting a set of videos, a, a series of videos, talking about the Whitman Buttercup. We are in um, Hangar 5 North at Gaines Valley Airport uh, with Earl. Uh, for those of you that don't know Earl, you need to look him up because he's famous. Uh, not rich and famous. Just not rich and famous, just famous. I uh, apologize for Hangar 5 North being a little bit of a mess, but we're, we've got quite a bit going on here this winter. It's a hangar in action. It's a hangar in action, yeah. Um, this is not Earl's hangar, this is my hangar. Uh, so if you've been on Whitman Buttercup Facebook page, um, facebook.com, Whitman Buttercup, um, you've seen uh, 18263, of course, the, the airplane that got all this started. If you've uh, seen most recent uh, videos, pictures, it's uh, 656JS, uh, uh, Joe Strauss. <laughs> that is uh, Whitman Buttercup off of plans uh, number 219 built by Joe Strauss in Minnesota, which I purchased from him last uh, year and a half ago. And we've been flying that uh, this winter on skis. So what it's we're on your Facebook. And it's on the Facebook page, uh, my Facebook page, um, and as well as the Whitman Buttercup page. Those are the two airplanes you'll see the most on there. So the reason we started this this series of videos is because there's a lot of interest in the Whitman Buttercup. There's a lot of interest in um, how to build certain parts of it, how to do certain things on the plans. Uh, and Earl's got some exciting uh, stuff to reveal. Not 100% complete yet, uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, we sat down for a minute just because we've started uh, making few videos here that will be posted up on YouTube and uh, not quite sure exactly where in YouTube maybe my page maybe we're going to create a Whitman Buttercup page if we get enough videos put together but we'll we'll figure out how to do that uh, as we're still getting into this but again 18263 the plane that started all of the resurrection of the Whitman Buttercup and I don't even know how many airplanes are flying now there's got to be 25 flying but there's got to be another 50 under construction so um, I'll turn it over to Earl and talk a little bit about how he got at least to here with uh, with his airplane, how he, how he started, and we'll just spend a couple minutes on that because I think most people know the background. If you haven't, um, please ask and we can provide more information. So go ahead, Earl. I uh, actually started this airplane, flew this airplane 20 years ago, believe it or not, in April. April 14, 2002, and uh, it, was, it was something that I wanted to do because I've got a tailwind and I enjoy it, but it's it's just too fast for uh, all these small grass strips that I used to love going to with my cup, telegraph, chief, all the other stuff we supply. So well, I saw this airplane, the original one, 18268, which is in the museum in Oshkosh. And I fell in love with it. But uh, I actually saw the uh, Sporting Nation magazine in May of 89 that really piqued my interest. And I talked to Whitman about it, and he passed away shortly after that, so I thought it was all on and on. But after I got a chance to crawl through a little bit that, uh, in the hangar, the Whitman hangar, I noticed I, there's an awful lot of similarities between this and the tail. And, uh, but we never really got too far away from this design on all of their airplanes. It's, it's, and I, as I go through the airplane, the way he did the hinges, the way he did the tail section, the family the tail section, the way he did the cutout of the wing, that's all women for speed and uh, simplicity. So, like I said, I, so I went ahead and I, I built the airplane out of pictures uh, and looking at the, we built four tailwinds, so it wasn't that much of a stretch for me to just move things around to make the dimensions work for, for this airplane. And uh, so I made a set of plans, mostly just on sheets of paper, brown paper, laid it on the floor at the museum, made some notes, and this is the result right here. So. so for 20 years, this airplane has been flying, I'm going to guess. 500-ish hours. Yeah, close to that now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, originally, um, I think Whitman started out with a Continental 85, right? I think before that, way back in 1937, he did something that was a 50 horsepower. Okay. And, and, when, and when you when you built this airplane, it had a 0200 on it. Yeah. 
and I got 20 years out of it and, there, and the engine ran flawlessly um, and it still would go 130 crews and uh, still land you know, a couple lengths of the airplane. The problem, I, I won't say it's a problem, is that we always have a need for speed and power, but the problem that I had was when we go to Oshkosh, I've been seven times with this, it uh, lacks a little performance at 90 degree weather with two people, full tank of gas and 75 pounds of baggage. It just, I, I couldn't get the altitude that I wanted. And my goal was to get up to 9,000 feet and enjoy the cooler air and get a little speed coming back with the westerly winds. But I just, I'm not going to say I couldn't do it, but it'd take a long time. I, my climb rate was so poor that I, I just used to hang around. 2,500 to 4,000. Most of the time, it's 2,500. So, and most of our summer, yeah, most, uh, of our most of our flying season, should say, is 80 to 90 degree temperatures. Yeah, that's humid. At least around here, um, we have a 4,000 foot so. strip, and lots of times, I don't have 75 pounds of baggage, and I don't have <clears throat> 130 to 40 pounds of gas. So, you know, at 10, 15 gallons of gas in the plane, and that makes a big difference. But there, there are the occasional times in which we're um, go for like day trip. Going, going, to, going to some place for a day trip or lunch or a fly-in or a picnic and it's 95 degrees out and you're with your wife and, and, uh, and, and, it, and, it's, and, and we're going into a small strip of 2,000 foot or 2,500 foot and, and, and the performance yeah. isn't there. Well, it's just there. So the next best thing is what we're about to do, about to show right now. Okay, so. Uh, do you want to yeah, do you want to announce it or do you want to show it? Let's show it. Okay. <laughs> uh, under this hood is a zero time 0290, 140 horsepower engine. Uh, pop the pop the door open a little yeah. bit, there, Earl. This is a uh, a Lycoming zero time 0290 engine. Uh, it's, it's taken a little different look because I've got the four inch prop extension and we just built this cowl and Jeff is working on the nose bowl right now and I'll probably gain I'm guessing 10 miles an hour if it wasn't my goal I know I'm going to gain a lot in, uh, in climb rate probably somewhere around the 1500 foot a minute climb rate so I really want to fly and Whip and said it in one of his uh, articles I want to fly the eight nine thousand foot, especially when going somewhere. And I want to be able to get up there with confidence. And the, when the power of this bag, it's not going to use any more fuel than the O two hundred did when I had it hammered to the wall. So um, I think this is going to be a a, a real good um, upgrade to what I had. Now, Jeff's got about one hundred and sixty horsepower in his. Yep. I'm not telling people to go ahead and do that before you're going to get 200 horsepower. <laughs> the 100, I would say, would you say that's enough? 160 is Yeah, enough. one, I mean, we've got a lot of time on my aircraft now in the last uh, 18 months. Yeah. Uh, and when I mean a lot of time, I think between the two of us, probably close to 80 hours or more. Oh, yeah. Um, which is quite a bit because we used to fly 10 to 20 hours a year and now. I think we put 13 hours on skis. So, spoiler, uh, spoiler, there will be some. Um, I don't know if we're going to have any videos of us flying with skis. We'll have some. We'll have some footage that we'll put into video for for some ski flying, but nothing that will take place after today, as the the snow's all gone uh, and will be gone for good here. But we'll take all the videos that we've made from last year. Um, I think. There was one video with, that I posted already, and I will try and put a link to that of us um, landing. I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was landing here, oh, where we were based to final here on skis. Okay. Uh, and uh, that, and and I think we have a video of us landing in Batavia on the on the hard surface on the tires. We retracted the, the skis back and and, and, uh, and landed on the hard tires. There's a video of Perry Warsaw landing on the hard on the hard surface on tires. I think there's a couple of off airport landings on skis that happened just this week. We picked some fields that had uh, just enough snow to land on, but not too much snow for us to know what was there. Um, so we had some ski flying. I think we got 13, 14 hours on skis this year, and we had another nine last year. So um, to get back to the 160 
it, it's perfect for those for, for flying with uh you know some intermediate size tires eight eight fifties yeah. um, skis I think you need it um, if you're getting into really short fields and you're getting out of short fields there's nothing like 160 horsepower I would say solo even on the even on the 850s solo I'm a 300 foot ish roll yeah. from a dead stop probably at least a 1500 foot climb rate yeah. and when it's cold like this the, the sky's the limit yeah. so uh, we were at 6,000 feet a week ago yeah. it took us less than five minutes to get up there we're flying over top uh, VFR over the top and uh, Lake Ontario 130 ish miles an hour you know it was about as fast as we can go with the skis on and that's what we did it was 130 that day so um, yeah so 160 horse really is I wouldn't I would yeah. I would recommend one more than that yeah and the plane was a really big job no, no not a lot no, no, no. there's a couple of things you could do to make it I think the ribs need to be closer together on the ribs or something other than that you don't want to get the plane too heavy and the just plane is the around 900 I think so yeah which is not unbelievable for what I see now so this plane weighed 819 to the L200 Probably the 850-ish, right? So it looks a little funny here in the front uh, with the with the just the aluminum, but this is really just a a brand new version of the original cowl that Earl had on there. I mean, it's aluminum sides, um, aluminum doors opening like this, and uh, fiberglass nose bowl. The uh, the original nose bowl was a one piece. That we had we had modified we had we had put a piece of fiberglass on the bottom for the, the quote unquote tunnel area um, had kind of a goofy looking snout to it. This has got a curved tunnel on the bottom. It has an RV uh, RV air box, so that's why it sticks out on the bottom a little bit. And the the nose bowl is missing today because uh, what we did is we took a nose bowl, we modified it heavily, we made a snout portion from scratch. Um, probably will. I have some pictures of that. Maybe there's a video of me working on it. Maybe some stills in here. Some stills we can put in. Um, today, four hours ago, we put paint on the mail, the mail hole, the mail plug, which is the cowl with all the modifications, finish, the snout piece. So there's th three pieces. We're going to attempt to make a, um, three molds and mold one brand new virgin part to go on there that's light, mean, and then green. <laughs> and if this works out okay, then we're gonna make uh, try to make stuff for our customers as well. That's that's the tough part is I find that the for me anyway, I thought that the cow is one of the toughest things to make in this airplane. Yeah, and the nose bowl that we that we've uh, really finished off for this, even if you don't have the RV style um, RV style airbox with the you know with that tunnel requirement on the bottom, if you just had the, the regular curved nose bowl down on the front and you just had an opening in it to go it you know to, to, to plumb to your carburetor um, that the nose bowl that we've worked on doesn't need the snout at the bottom there's a there's an indent on it but we can mold it and and that's easy to remove and we've got our customers finishing up an airplane now we will we'll reference that we've got the shorter uh, mm -hmm. air box that's back about a half way and I, we've got several customers all my uh, all buddies now all my family. so i'll get pictures of all our customers that yeah, it'd be highly difficult to have a one size fits all part. Um, but if you have light combing with a four inch prop extension, you, this nose bowl would get you 90% of the way there geometrically. You know, if you had, you know, formed aluminum sides, top, things like that, you can go from the square fuselage to the round nose bowl with the nose bowl that we've worked out. We've kind of got the angles now on it so that it blends. <laughs> And I've got some tips and tricks along the way, so what we're hoping on doing is this is a finished airplane, of course, but uh, as we keep working on things that I just well up to mention now for another project we've got back here. So I'll be showing the buttercup, but I'll also be showing things that I've done. I'm also the gas quality instructor for the EA and Oshkosh. So I'd like to show some of that, and we'll just see as it grows as, they, as we get people's comments yeah. and so on. We'll go from there. Yeah, so it, it, in as these videos get edited, posted, subscribe to the channel, like it, dislike it if you dislike it, put comments, be kind. Earl has, you know, you don't want to hurt his feelings. 
Um, <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. We will attempt to answer them. Facebook.com, Whitman Buttercup. Um, Looseair.com. Aircraft Spruce, you can buy plans, uh, materials. The plans are buy yourself the plans. And, and, and Earl, the Earl, can, Earl can sell you the plans. They, they, have, they, the, they have the kits. Um, and they're all raw material. It's not like you right. buy something to put on an airplane. It's all raw materials. But right. If you want to get an airplane on budget, you got to do some scratch building. It's raw materials are the way to go. So. And, our, and our plan is, like I said, we bought a cheap camera. So we apologize if the sound is inadequate if the video quality isn't as good but we bought a cheap camera to do a few videos to start we're gonna do a couple of uh, videos coming up at some point where we'll look at my aircraft and Earl can talk about the, the subtle differences in my aircraft from the plans um, things like uh, an extra an extra hinge point on the elevator I think was one an extra rib in the vertical fin different nose ball, different nose ball things like that so uh, we'll detail that, um, and like I said, we'll try and post some ski flying videos. They seem to be pretty uh, popular. People like that, and we'll talk about the skis before we take them off the airplane for the season. We'll talk about them, and then we'll also talk about the leading edge. And some yep. people don't put it on, and Whitney didn't have it on the first 20 years of the airplane. Yep. And it, it works well, but um, you know when you need it, just want to go an airplane and get some hours. So then I'll talk more about. Anything else? I think that's about it. We're wrapping up. Okay. Wait to see if next week. Yes, next time. <laughs> All right. Go. <laughs>